Well, so far we've had a bit of a shakeout this year, a technical correction in the month of February, keeping everyone a little bit wary about risks ahead. What do you think investors need to think about this year? Oh, good question. Um, I think the Fed. I'd say the, um, obviously the U.S. economy is in good shape. Uh, actually, it's in very good shape. It's like a car going fast, and then Trump decided to step down on the accelerator with these uh, tax cuts. It's got good growth. The inflation numbers are coming through. Uh, low unemployment, full, un full employment. Um, so the real concern is what happens when you have this injection, this fiscal kind of injection coming in. Um, I think rates have to go up, uh, but probably a little bit more than people think. Uh, we're a believer of four rates cuts, rate hikes, sorry, this year, um, but probably another three to four next year. So I think that's the space that's going to drive a lot of value around the rest of the world, including especially the emerging markets are going to feed off that. Do you have broader fears about how Trump is steering the United States when we have talk around potential trade wars, steel, aluminium, telecommunications, not to mention the fact we've had a huge change in the executive team, Rex <laughs> Tillerson, the latest casualty? Hot off the press, yeah. Uh, simple answer, yes, because there's lots of mixed messages coming out. He's done some things that have been, you know, stimulative for the economy, so that's good. Uh, but there is a lot of confusion out there. I don't think the steel and aluminium tariffs on their own are a worry. Um, I think it's 0.2% of the U.S. economy. What's more worrying is, you know, people exiting the administration, probably because there's more to come. If you look at Gary Cohen's departure as a free trader, and I doubt that he left just because of steel and aluminium. You've got the intellectual property inquiry report due out this month. If that is, you know, if that says something negative about China, which is what everyone's expecting, I can't see how Trump just sits on his hands and does nothing. So the risk of escalation, tit for tat, I think is very real, and that causes a lot of uncertainty. How do hedge funds play the story? Is it just purely weak dollar? Uh, no, not necessarily, because I think when you look at where the dollar may go and the interest rate differential vis-a-vis -vis euro, uh, euro will probably the ECB will probably what start hiking, well, stop their asset purchases at the end of this year, maybe start hiking mid next year, and very gradually, probably 0.1% per quarter. You've got the Bank of Japan as the other G3, who cannot tighten. They just have you know 2.4%. Uh, unemployment, so they're in full employment mode, but low inflation going lower, so no scope. So the interest rates in the U.S. look pretty interesting. So I don't think it's absolutely going to be a, a, a sure thing that you're getting a U.S. dollar going lower. I think you want to play the volatility. Um, I think there's interesting ways to play that. Uh, you can play Europe versus the U.S. volatility. We like that relative value trade. Um, and I think also this could shake out the emerging markets. You know, the, the emerging markets with some strong um, foreign reserves should be in quite good shape and should be quite resilient. So you then go idiosyncratic and look at their, their institutions and what they're doing. And Brazil, I think, is a good example of one we like. On the other hand, ones not in so good shape or highly dependent on foreign investment, Turkey, South Africa, we would worry about more. And I think out of that, there's some opportunities.